come in from the swim, pick up their bikes, uh, drop off their bikes, pick up their shoes, and come back rather dirtier than they, when they left, and finish um, somewhere along this point here, uh, in front of the grandstand and the late side finish. Um, the swim itself, uh, for the sprint, it will be a one lap swim for the full uh, World Championship qualifying race. On the Sunday, it'll be a two loop swim of 750 meters, as you can see there, going out for 200, taking a sharp right hand turn for another 200, and coming back 350 up the slipway and into transition. <coughs> There are two bike courses for this event. The sprint being a 20 kilometer uh, course uh, will take, uh, and it will cover a variety of terrain. Um, it will actually cross um, the terrain being, there's a, a off-road is in the red. The green is also off-road and what's referred to as single track or technical. And the blue is what we've described here as campong, campong or off-road. Uh, tarmac. The off-road tarmac being actually in certain sections, uh, thank you to uh, Putrajaya Corporation, actually motorcycle lanes because there are obviously within Putrajaya quite a lot of roads and we need to get either across them or in our case under them. So we're using the motorcycle lanes for that. Which means that riders will be completely safe and we will be pretty much other than a few road crossings uh, be traffic free, unlike a lot of tri triathlons which have to also race on roads where the traffic cannot be obviously stopped entirely. Um, we will cross, the most significant thing about the sprint course I guess is that it will cross the Deng Hill Bypass and spend some time over here in the rubber plantation and the fringes of the wetlands, which obviously are one of the reasons why that uh, lake water that Avahar mentioned um, is uh, so, such a good quality and able to be swum in. Um, it will then cross back uh, and come up into and around what's known as Putrajaya Challenge Park. Um, it will then cross again another section of wetlands with, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the, of the river up there. Is it the Langa? Somewhere Langa, I think, yeah. Um, thank you. Um, before turning back, coming across this area here, which I refer to as the wastelands. Um, they can wave at the KLIA Express as it thunders past them in the opposite direction. And then they'll actually physically enter Putrajaya Challenge Park and ride through some technical trail in there before returning back uh, across through a rubber plantation and back into transition. The, that's the sprint course, one loop of that sprint course. For the World Championship qualifying course, route is slightly different. Um, it is not exactly uh, twice the distance of the sprint course. It doesn't need to be. It's 32 kilometers uh, approximately in length. It will be two loops. It will involve a lot more technical, a lot more hill climbs, and a lot more descents as well. Um, and instead of therefore crossing over into this side of the Deng Hill Bypass, it stays on this side and it goes in and back through Putrajaya Challenge Park and making use of the very uh, attractive and flowing single track trail that has been prepared in there and is available to all mountain bikers here in uh, the uh, Kuala Lumpur Solangor area actually. Um, other than that, the course is fairly similar uh, to um, the sprint course, apart from a little bit of uh, interesting stuff over here. And the reason why there's some interesting stuff over here is that exterior as a brand races are able to give us quite um, a free reign in terms of how we design our courses uh, but they do sort of like to say there's a few recommendations and one of those recommendations is even the pro riders and the very skilled technical mountain bike riders really ought to get off of their bike at one point in time and push it or hike with it. So this section over here uh, complies with that recommendation basically because I don't think, in fact I'm going to set this as a challenge for the pros, if any of them can ride it, I will definitely buy them a drink afterwards. <laughs> um, any questions about the bike courses? Um, you will notice here, um,
there is, uh, and I think you've got copies of these, and these will, by the way, be published, I think, either today or tomorrow on our Facebook site and our website, so that participants can now actually get to see where the course is going to go. There are a few road crossings, um, because it is a city that we're doing this race in, and there are roads in the city. Um, but we will, with the help of the Jaya Corporation and obviously the uh, logistics and service team and the police, etc., be able to control the traffic, which is quite limited at the weekends anyway. And um, we will ensure absolute safety to all of our participants when it comes to the um, The run course, fortunately, is slightly different. It doesn't have any road crossings at all. I've managed to find a rather weedy, interesting trail, literally just a few hundred yards from where we're sitting. Um, it takes in rubber plantation, palm plantation, um, sand as if you were running across a beach just like in the Maui World Championships, some rocky terrain, a quarry, um, there's not too many hills in Putrajaya because it is obviously a wetlands area relatively flat but I've managed to find as many hills as possible so that essentially um, it isn't just about speed. Being a fast road runner, being able to run a marathon for example in two and a half hours or something like that won't be a huge advantage because the terrain is so varied the fast runners will find that they actually are broken up a little bit in terms of their their beautiful smooth strides they'll have to tiptoe not quite through the tulips but certainly through the rocks and the rubble and the, the logs and everything else that's going to be in their way um, essentially the, the course leaves the transition area and winds its way through some palm plantation that uh, will then come up through some uh, rubber plantation here and there is a water reservoir up the top here of the, the, the hill where there's a, a communication aerial actually if you look out here you'll be able to see it and in fact there's a service road that will go up to it we'll have a water station up there as a result and then it will wind its way back down through this quarry area and the, the nice thing about it for me, actually, is it's going to wind its way through some beautiful grasslands across a river down here and end up with a rather challenging run across some fairly sort of wet grass which fronts the lake. This is actually the lake out here, so all of this section is literally run along the side of the lake. Um, the problem for the runners is that they're going to need one leg longer than the other because it's actually handled quite seriously, so it does make it a bit of a challenge. Uh, and the course will finish at the grandstand, uh, again, inside. So that's the course, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the only last thing that I want to say is that there are a few do's and don'ts next year. Um, each of the participants will be given the full uh, do's and don'ts in terms of rules and regulations um, in their race uh, brochure. I think you have soft copies again on the DVD that you and the team at Radius have put together for us. Uh, the main do's and don'ts from my perspective, uh, perspective is um, do be nice to us. Um, it's not just me, there's a huge team behind me that's actually helped and will have helped to put this race on, including over a hundred volunteers who have already registered with us um, to help us on the day, and we're expecting a few more, and we'd certainly invite a few more to contact us um, at volunteer 